This video is sponsored by Hoya Miles. Heating and cooling represent the largest contributors to your energy bills. In fact, in the US, back in 1973, the average home was about 1,600 square feet. But by 2019, that had risen all the way to 2,300 square feet, which means it takes more and more energy to keep those spaces comfortable, whether it's summertime or wintertime. And that's why so much energy and effort is put into insulation and other technologies to help lower the burden that heating and air conditioning imposes. And today we have something really exciting. This is a phase change insulation, and this goes behind your drywall, and it's supposed to save you a ton of money on heating and cooling. So how does it do? We have a little bit of experimentation and data to share with you, and we're going to break this all down. I'm Ricky, and this is Tupac Da Vinci. Let's start with just insulation and its purpose. The whole point of insulation is to be a really poor thermal conductor, to be a bad bridge to break the heat or cool inside your house from leaving to the outside. In the wintertime, it's really cold outside, so the heat in your house is gonna to wanna to flow from areas of high temperature to lower temperature. And you don't want that, because you have to keep heating that space and you'll lose it to the outside. So if you put traditional bat insulation or foam insulation, that helps a great deal. And the thicker your walls, the more it'll be resistant to changes in temperature. But this is interesting because what this does is it works in a completely different principle. So unlike traditional bat or foam insulation that help to be a bad thermal barrier to conducting heat, phase change insulation works in a little bit of a different way. As you can see here, this is a product by a company called QE Platinum. They're not sponsoring the video, but they did send me a sample to mess around with. The first thing you'll notice is that there's an aluminum foil outer casing. That matters because aluminum foil like this is a natural radiant barrier, which means infrared energy from warm objects won't get past us. It'll be reflected back. That's why a lot of homes now will have radiant barriers in the attic and other areas. And we'll get back to why that's really important during our testing stage. Inside of here, you've got this. And what's really interesting about this is this is right now a pretty cool room. So it's in a solid state. But if you started to warm this up, this would absorb that energy and change from a solid to a liquid instead of changing in temperature. The same way an ice cube in a cold drink keeps your drink cold while absorbing that heat to have to change state into a liquid. Before we get into the data and the testing, let's just talk about kind of what we're dealing with here. First of all, this stuff is really durable. It's meant to last and degrade only about 2% in 100 years and has a 30 year warranty. It also has self healing properties, meaning if one of these pouches were to rupture, it'll potentially kind of seal itself back up. And even if it didn't, the contents are totally safe and biodegradable. In fact, I think it's made from like a soybean oil compound. But this particular formulation is a little bit of a trade secret, I'd imagine, and it's adjustable to your needs. So when you call this company, you could tell them where you live and they could create a special blend that melts and freezes at the exact temperature that makes the most sense for your house. What's really interesting as well is this is going into your house. So fire safety is a paramount concern. And in the case of the QE Platinum, it has a fire safety score of five and a smoke emitting score of five as well on the ASTME 84 fire safety test. Now, the lower the score, the better. For comparison, spray foam insulation is between 25 and 100 on flame spread and 450 on smoke emittance. So this stuff is gonna be the safest thing in your wall if you were to put it in. So the fundamental principle is that this is almost kind of like a thermal battery in your wall or in your attic in your crawl space, wherever you put it, that charges and discharges during the day. Let's talk about how exactly this works. Okay, really quick before we get back to the video, let me take a quick moment to tell you about our sponsor this week, Hoy Miles, and why we are using Hoy Miles for our solar system and give you a little update. Our panels are up. We're about two weeks from finally being on grid and being able to operate. And with Hoy Miles microinverters, each panel has its own inverter, which means that the trunk is providing AC power to the house instead of having to put these all in DC. And the really cool part about Hoy Miles is they don't just make one-to-one -one inverters, meaning each panel has its own, but they make these four-to-one and two-to-one and even six-to-one inverters. So for this string of 10 panels, all we need is two four-in-one inverters, which will power four and four, and a single two-in-one inverter for the final two. So three inverters covers all 10 panels. They're all microinverters. Each panel gets its own controller and doesn't have any shading or any other problems. So when you combine the design flexibility of microinverters, the really high efficiency and longer life, 25 year warranty typically with Hoy Miles, it's easy to see why they might make sense for you. So if you're a solar installer or a homeowner and you wanna check this out, we'll have links in the description to see the inverters that we're using for our system. Huge thanks to Hoy Miles and you for supporting the show. 
Okay, now to understand exactly how the phase change material works, let's talk about water and what happens as you warm up water. So if we were to start applying energy, like heat, to a pot of water, the temperature obviously goes up. But then something happens around, let's say, zero degrees. The temperature stops going up for a while. And the reason is because now that energy doesn't go to increasing the temperature of the liquid, but it goes to breaking the bonds that make it a, a solid to melt it into a liquid. Once those bonds have been sufficiently broken, temperature can rise again, obviously until 100 degrees Celsius. Now, yes, I understand that's a really brilliant system of measuring temperatures and Fahrenheit makes no sense, but let's not get into that right now. <laughs> All we need to care about now is that, yes, the temperature will rise again until 100 degrees. Then again, the temperature won't change for a while until it starts to go up again. That is the phase change. To phase change water from liquid to gas, also requires a ton of energy. And the opposite is true. If things cooled off, the temperature of the steam would lower until it reached 100, and then it would just stay flat for a while until that steam condensed into water, and then it would lower down in temperature until it got to here when it starts to freeze. And when it freezes, it's absorbing energy but not changing temperature. And this is what the phase change material is taking advantage of. At night, it's really cold outside, and your house was warm, so this should be melted and kind of thawed out. And as the temperature outside starts to dip, this liquid would start to solidify, but by doing so, it would release energy back into the room. So by being a liquid and turning to a solid, it'll release energy, keeping your room warmer longer. And then later on in the day when the sun's out, it starts to warm up again, and instead of letting that heat into the house, it has to change the phase back to a liquid before the temperature inside your house goes up. And by taking advantage of this phenomenon, this small little pouch, believe it or not, has an amazing insulative value. As you mentioned before, it's also a radiant barrier. We'll get back to that. But if you had an inch and a half of this material, it has the same thermal mass as a 12 inch concrete wall. So to figure out if this makes sense for you, you really need to have a little bit of a temperature delta during the day. So here, for example, in San Diego, our days, even in the winter, can reach 60 to 70 degrees. And at night, especially this last year, has been cold down to around 35 to 40 degrees at night. So that's a 30, 35, 40 degree delta. And that is enough of a range that it can change the phase and actually be very applicable. If you live in a coastal area or near the equator where the temperature doesn't change very much day to night, you never really get a chance for the battery to change state and to have value. So it might not make as much sense if you live in those kinds of areas. All right, so enough of that. Let's get into the testing and the numbers. Juan and Brim, my editors, went ahead and built these boxes. We wanted to make something that kind of resembled a two by four traditional wall. So we came up with this design for a box. It's pretty much a perfect square cube with a 16 inch interior volume. With two by four framing, we had an outside built of OSB wood and that left enough room for insulation. In the first go, we had a control box with nothing. It was just wood two by fours, no insulation. Then we had traditional rock wool insulation for the second box. The third had rock wool and the QE platinum phase change material. And finally, we had a sensor outside, kind of in the shade to just measure the temperature outside. So here is the data for the first week we had this running. Now, the first takeaway was that the insulation did almost nothing. Because if you look at the control box that had no insulation, that almost matches up perfectly with the bat rock wool insulation that we had. So that made me realize, I think we had a flaw in our testing because typically that rock wool is behind a sheet of drywall. It's totally encased, meaning the air can't just move in and out of it. But in our example, it was open bat insulation. That's no good because the way that this insulation works is that it doesn't allow the air to move and the air is kind of isolated and the air is a decent insulator by itself. But if you have it open and hot air is able to rise and mix and move through the bat, it'll blend and mix and perform very poorly as you can see here. Also, I realized 
how do we know that the QE Platinum was doing the work or if it was the radiant barrier that aluminum would provide anyway? So we ran this test again, and we'll get to that here in a moment. But if you look at this graph, you can see that the bound, the high and low temperature for the QE Platinum is by far the tightest. It never gets as cold as the coldest outside temperatures or any of the other installations, and it never gets as hot either. But what's really interesting is how well it performs when it was really hot out. So here on February 9th, it wasn't actually that hot. So the temperature actually never was higher than 71 degrees, but inside both of the boxes, the one with insulation and the control, it reached about 88 degrees. And that's crazy. That's a really hot, uncomfortable space. You would have to run air conditioning to be able to accommodate that. But the QE Platinum never even reached above 67.3 degrees, which is pretty remarkable never reached as hot as even the outside air. And that's because you had to melt all of that material before that heat would then reach the room. Also, if you look at the QE Platinum, you'll see the graphs are very wide. The temperature takes a lot longer to change and that's what thermal mass is able to do. That's why a big concrete wall just takes a long time to heat up and once it's hot, it takes a long time to cool off. And the QE Platinum, just that little pouch, has a similar looking graph. You'll see the day gets hot and then it falls off quickly, but the QE Platinum takes several hours later and it never cools off quite as much. I was shocked by these results. Honestly, the difference in a few degrees, especially for us in the summertime, could be a significant amount of a reduction in air conditioning use. But like we mentioned before, we had a question about that insulation. That data just screamed something's off. So we ran the experiment again a second time. And here's a stretch of two days between the 16th and the 17th of February for us here in San Diego. Now, what's interesting is this time what we did is we added aluminum foil to the insulation box. So now we had insulation like before, plus aluminum foil. The aluminum foil blocks any air passing through, allowing the insulation to truly function correctly. And it adds the radiant barrier component. In fact, if you look at the coldest point on that red line down there, there was a point where it was colder in the box than it was outside. And I think the reason why is the concrete and the ground and the earth was just a little bit warmer than usual. And that radiant heat hit those sensors. Whereas inside that box, it was blocking that radiant heat. And as a result, the temperature in the box was colder than it was outside. Now, again, our, our sensors and our equipment are not the highest fidelity. So take all this with a grain of salt. But I think generally, you can start to see some patterns. And the same pattern emerges where the QE Platinum has the tightest band. The temperature variation in those boxes are just way tinier than the... So yes, a radiant barrier is an amazing thing. So if you have an attic, you have high temperature areas, you live in Las Vegas or Phoenix or Florida, a radiant barrier in your attic would be a huge addition. But the QE Platinum takes that to another level. Honestly, I'm pretty blown away. I really wanna add this to my house because if we're gonna go net zero, I wanna use as little energy as possible, especially for running on batteries, right? If you have solar and batteries, you don't wanna have to run air conditioning for any longer than you have to. And currently in our house, it is horribly drafty. We need to seal stuff up, doors are leaky, and there's very little insulation in the walls, I can tell, because that house gets hot and cold way too easily, and we can fight back against it. So. How much would this stuff cost? So speaking with some people from QE Platinum, they told me that their pricing currently is between 250 and 350 per square foot here in the US. That means the average 2,300 square foot American house, which is 40 by 60 feet. And if you had eight foot walls, we're talking between 11,000 and 16,000 dollars including the roof, which is actually the biggest part of the price. Remember, this is just exterior walls. You wouldn't put this on the interior walls, just the exterior walls. So not cheap by any means. But the bigger question is, if your house is fully finished, you have drywall up, are you gonna really rip out the drywall to add this? Maybe, maybe not. For us, we know we wanna upgrade some of the electrical. We wanna do a gray water capture system. We wanna insulate the heck out of our walls and then maybe put this in and then re-drywall. So for us, this is gonna be a cost I am going to pay. And I wanna have QE Platinum in all my walls and also the attic. Now for most people, the most common use case is gonna be putting it in your attic. The attic is a major source of heat and loss, right? Because as heat rises, you're gonna lose a lot of heat or, or bring in heat from the sun heating up your roof. So with the QE Platinum material, what's really nice about it is it doesn't really require any traditional installation. All you do, is get your typical blown in or bat insulation. And then on top of that, just lay sheets of the QE Platinum. 
You don't have to staple it down or anything else. If you got to get back up there to do some work, you can just roll them out of your way, install a ceiling light, and then roll it back in place. And the QE Platinum would have to change phase, as we mentioned, before ever changing the temperature in or outside of your house. But honestly, as far as a recommendation, it really depends on you, how much your house costs, how much your bills are, how long do you plan on living there, how badly do you want to save and be closer to net zero. This is a very high end material. But what's really cool is this used to cost even more and they brought the prices down because what they started to do is roll this out largely in attics, work with installers, get larger and larger volume, reach a certain level of economies of scale to bring the prices down. And speaking with the representatives over there, they're confident they can reach about $1.90 per square foot, continuing to bring down prices. So hopefully that gives you an idea of if it's worth it for you or not. That's hard to say. It just comes down to your own personal preference. But I will tell you, I'm going to reach out to QB Platinum and figure out how we can get this in our house. Because I think living in San Diego, this stuff would be a game changer. I, I really think we could maybe not even need the heating but for an hour or two a day. And I don't think we would need the air conditioning, maybe, but for a week or two a year. And with our really ridiculous energy prices, thanks to SDG&E, this would be a added benefit that I think would pay for itself over time. So here's a couple of final thoughts, right? As we mentioned before, this stuff is safe. So if you were to puncture it or as you were installing it or put a nail through it, you might lose some of the material behind, but it'll dry out and it's not gonna harm anything. It's not harmful to life or to the environment. The whole material is biodegradable. And as we mentioned, it's also safe. So there's a lot of like ancillary benefits that go along with it. And while the material is really quite thin, it does have some thickness, so you'll have to figure out how your walls are going to fit, how the drywall goes in. But that's mostly a question for the installers, and I'm, as sure, I'm sure as they get more hip to this, they're going to know what they're doing. And as building codes around the world continue to get more and more stringent, I think materials like this can really help homes pass those passive standards and higher energy efficiency standards that everyone is trying to build to. So that is a look at the QE Platinum phase change insulation. It is wildly fascinating. And the data I thought just totally sold what this does. And I think it's pretty amazing. I'd love to know what you think. Would you want to do this in your house? Have you learned something? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm Ricky with Tuba Da Vinci, and we'll catch you guys next week.